Good morning. Let us begin our celebration by calling upon God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pause for a moment and consider how we stand before God and one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your law sacred upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death For according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive. Because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. After three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what are you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way, who is the greatest? Then he sat down, called the 12 and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst and putting his arm around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the little children come to me, for in their innocence they reflect the innocence of the angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. When I entered the seminary in 1967, there were 33 other young men 
who entered the Oblates of St. Francis de Sales. By the time I was ordained in 1978, I was the only one who had remained. My older brother, sensitive as he is to my feelings, claimed at that time that not one of my classmates could bear the thought of living with me the rest of their lives. <laughs> whatever the cause of their leaving and whatever the cause of my staying, there was one wonderful benefit of being the only person ordained that year. I was ordained in my home diocese of Harrisburg and by an oblate bishop, Bishop Minder. Since I was the only seminarian being ordained, Bishop Minder accepted my invitation to eat dinner at my parents' home. What a surprise for mom and dad to have Bishop for dinner. It remained one of the highlights of my parents' lives. Also joining us for dinner that evening was my sister and her family and my sensitive brother and his family. Included in that group, of course, were my nephews and my nieces. My one niece, Angela, preschool at the time, had no idea what a bishop was or who the bishop was. She knew priests and she knew to call priests father, but she had never met a bishop before, so when she met him, like all adults, and he was introduced as Bishop Minder, she said, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Bishop. <laughs> All of us, including Mr. Bishop, thought that was cute. As the evening went on and the typically hundreds of Italian relatives came and went, we wondered where the bishop had gone. Before too long, we found him on the floor in the back porch with Angela coloring in her books and playing blocks on the floor. It's one of the most treasured pictures my family has. When finally the bishop had to leave, Angela cried. She said, I like Mr. Bishop. He's a nice man. Bishop Minder got down on one knee, kissed her and said, I like you too. You're a very nice little girl. For centuries, our Lord has put into perspective what true greatness is. All along, our Lord has given us ways to define and measure what true greatness really is. Our Lord, Francis de Sales, Bishop Mender, and my niece all seem to have the same answer as to what greatness is measured by. It's not what we are, it's who we are that's so important. Doctors of various kinds, priests, monsignors, and bishops too, colonels and generals, chiefs and majors. Eventually, it all comes down to this. We are important because Christ lives in each of us. We are important because we reflect Christ in the way that we treat one another. Perhaps today we are reminded that we shouldn't be so impressed with the title someone has or with the number of degrees they have on their walls. We shouldn't be so impressed with the power or the position they hold. We should be happy, however, if our genuine goodness and if our inner kindness impress a child. Because if they do, Christ surely lives within us. And so today, let us reflect on how we interact with one another. And let us reflect, reflect that quality of innocence in the lives of children and in the lives of angels. And may God continue to bless each of you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard God's word and having reflected upon what that word means in our lives, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pause now in prayer as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children and teachers in school, especially at St. Agnes, that they will be safe from all harm and strive to do their best, we pray to the Lord. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Gaudet, and for Ann Whalen and Caroline Jones, postulants with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Pauline Saunders, and for our deceased, especially Michael Hurley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For living and deceased parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we come before you this morning with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we have spoken aloud and all the prayers and petitions each of us holds in our hearts. We place them before you in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
just a few announcements. Our poor box collection this week is for the Poor Clares Monastery. Uh, October 3rd, Sunday, October 3rd, we will have your parish picnic here at the church, and so details for that are in the bulletin. Next weekend, we will have a special collection for Hurricane Ida. And then lastly, I have both a challenge and an invitation for all the high schoolers here and all the families with high schoolers. So the first, the challenge, and then I'll have the invitation. The challenge is this, that every high schooler here in the parish should be able to answer the question, two questions. One, how am I growing in my faith? And two, how am I growing in my friendships? So these two questions, these are some of the important questions for high schoolers. And uh, you should be able to answer those questions for yourselves at this point. So that's the challenge. The invitation is this, is that uh, on Tuesdays we will be getting together for giving you opportunities to do both of those things. Grow in your friendships, grow in your faith, grow in service to the community. So we're starting this Tuesday, September 21st, at 7.30 p.m. with a service project. We'll be preparing pantry packs for refugees. We actually do need your help because I want to have the biggest turnout of pantry packs for Catholic charities out of anybody else. And so I'm pretty competitive, so I need you to be there. I will need your help. Um, and then we'll also have other opportunities going into the future. So we'll have to, uh, once a month opportunity for adoration and confession, growing in prayer. Uh, we will have opportunity to ask questions about the faith. We'll have Truth Tuesdays once a month where we'll discuss some aspect of the faith or what's going on in the culture or the world and, and what, how we should approach that as Christians. And then we will also have, uh, hopefully monthly, beginning October 9th, Saturday, October 9th, the opportunity for eight high schoolers to serve with the missionaries of charity in Washington, D.C., serving the homeless. So that would be once a month, the first one on October 9th. And so I can only take eight at a time because uh, that's who they can actually use to serve the homeless uh, per Saturday. So we have all of those opportunities coming up. For the rest of us, I'd ask you to pray for our high schoolers and then also participate by we need the foodstuffs for the pantry packs this Tuesday. And so the actual items we need are listed in the bulletin. Uh, and then we have uh, bins at all the entrances of the church. And so if you could drop those off before Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., that would be great. There will also be opportunities for school families to drop it off in the morning carpool on Mondays and Tuesdays. So thank you so much for your generosity, for your prayers, and God bless you. You may be wondering why Father McShirley gave the announcements today. Well, when he came out at communion, he said, Father Saunders noticed that you neglected to incense the altar in the beginning of the mass, which I did. So he said, I don't want that old priest to forget to do the announcements. <laughs> So thank you, Father McShirley, for standing in for this old priest. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>